someone who has mastered time because money is infinite, but time is not. And a lot of people are out there just watching the minutes go by or they struggle and say, man, I don't have time for that. Or my favorite answer is I've just been real busy. And that's what Conrad Ruiz, the founder of Wellware, helps people with is figure out how to get out of that rat race of saying you're too busy to get things done so that you can find time in your day to do the things that you actually want to do with your valuable time. So happy to have Conrad on and share what he has developed with his company, Wellware. How how did this come up, Conrad? Because uh, I don't think whenever I was in school, they were like, hey, do you want to figure out how to be an expert in time management? I don't think that was a career choice. What an interesting thing for them to leave out, right? I I also look back on growing up and the types of things I got during education. And time management is weird in that it, it clearly encapsulates all of us, um, but very only until certain stages of your professional career do you sometimes get it brought up and it's usually brought up as an internal struggle rather than like hey by the way this is something we probably realized you've been dealing with and you know here are some solutions to just kind of hand out you or the, they hand you out these solutions and you're like yeah this doesn't really help but like i'm still like doing way too many things to even make sense of how i can like start implementing these strategies or tactics into my realm so um josh my First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And to answer your question, I also didn't go down this path of, you know, I knew I wanted to become a time manager, if you will. Um, I knew way back when, back since high school, I knew I wanted to be an engineer. And I realized that I had a fascination for you know, being very logical and being very organized and having a good sense about things and how they work. Um, but I actually was supposed to become a biomedical engineer. That was where I actually went to do all of my major primary studies. Uh, my father was in medicine. And for me, that just seemed to be the right fit. Um, what ended up happening was in my journey towards studying biomedical engineering, there was an additional story involved with where I was at with my own personal health and what types of things I was exploring around that situation and how it tied back to my studies. But after about three years into my college career, I found myself falling in love with the world of business and realizing that there was more to, I guess, work uh, than just solving engineering problems. Um, I really liked the side of business that involved um, sort of seeing the bigger picture and kind of figuring out what it was about the people that you were working with and the things that you were trying to accomplish and the markets you were trying to impact and what that might mean for me from a future standpoint of success. And I took all of that and I really went full head on into it. I ended up basically doing my best to become an entrepreneur right out of the gate um, from college, just knowing what I knew as a biomedical engineer, which was very little. So long story short, I found myself after a year in grad school in for business um, in the middle of New York City. I was studying to become an entrepreneur through a startup program that I was accepted into graciously. And basically, I thought I was trying to turn my whole biomedical startup initiative. I had this idea that I wanted to take on that, for lack of better words, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And so I crashed and burned trying to be the engineer, the founder, the guy who pays the bills. And I just didn't make it, it didn't, it didn't work. Like I didn't have the time. I was too busy and I wasn't getting anywhere. And so I stopped. I, I, I basically turned around and said, I'm done. I don't know what I did wrong, but I know I did something wrong because clearly I'm not the successful person that I thought I was supposed to be. Um, call me impatient, call me young and stupid, say whatever you want, but I failed. And all I wanted to know was what I could have done differently. So I went around to all the other entrepreneurs next to me and I said, hey guys, like, how do you make sense of your time? How do you organize yourselves and run your business and live your life and manage your families and do all these other things? Because I thought they had the answers more than I did. Um, and some of them did, but for the most part, a lot of them kind of turned around and said, look, Conrad, it's not that pretty. Um, you know, the updates that we're giving you during our, you know, weekly sessions of hanging out, they're not 
fully representative of all the other struggles that we're dealing with. Here's the truth. Here's my calendar. Here's my schedule. And that's when I realized it. That's when I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only one. So the, first of all, that made me feel way better in, in some painful ways. But also um, it made me realize that the struggle for a lot of people is very silent surrounding their time. And one of the positives of sitting down with all these folks was that they turned around and said, hey, listen, you know, Connor, just you giving me the time and space to bring this up and for us to kind of talk about it and put together some kind of thought process around like what we were going to do next. That was really helpful. Like, I don't give myself enough time and justice just to do that. Fast forward five years, and this is all I've been doing. I have been working with a variety of different businesses, a variety of professionals to, to suspend them from their time for a second to talk about what's going on and how they're organizing themselves logistically. There's a lot of empathy involved. There's a lot of humanistic components. I'm not just telling people you need to be more mechanical, you need to be more efficient, da 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 da, do this, do that. I'm trying to understand where they're coming from because I've been in the shoes where I've literally just burnt myself to a crisp. And I wouldn't want anyone to go through that. That's been the spawn of well aware. That's how I came to be where I did. I, I found a problem. And it's a big problem. I was just on a call with someone before we hopped on here and he was like, Hey Josh, I'm a little tired. I've been up for 26 hours working on something. And I'm just like, you need to go to sleep. <laughs> Cause uh, you're just burning yourself to the ground. So that's the sort of problem that a lot of people are. And then the beginning of any business, I mean, you have to, you have to do everything, especially if you don't have any money starting out, but it started, as soon as you start making money, you have a decision. Do you take that money for yourself or do you figure out how to take time out of the equation to start focusing on creating an actual business? And those are the sort of things that you help people such as myself get out of. Absolutely. And to your point, Josh, and I'm sure you see this with a very particular uh, lens given your money background, but there is a constant game that we're all playing here with regards to when do we decide to make trades with our time versus when do we decide to make trades with our money? And you said it eloquently at the beginning, money is inherently infinite. We can always get more of it. Time is inherently finite. We have a set amount of it no matter what happens. There's, there's one could argue, and this is one of my favorite things to kind of look at it from the perspective of time is, you know, we talk a lot about bookkeeping with regards to our money and our finances. I don't find the same conversation being held to in terms of like really keeping a ledger and really understanding what that ledger is telling us. We don't do the same thing with our schedules. We don't do the same thing with our time. And that's kind of because calendars aren't designed to operate like bookkeeping ledgers. There's, there's, a, there's a reality to that. They have a different purpose. Um, but yeah, I think for your friend, it seems obvious that just the need for sleep is so inherently valuable because sleep is what gives us the means to have energy for the next day. We're playing a marathon, not a sprint. Like if we crash and burn now, we may have pushed ourselves back months of the compound interest of whatever it is that we may have been working on. I'm going to try to use these types of money terms because I feel like they add a lot of relevance to, again, to me, it's like it's yin and yang. Um, but needless to say, um, and this is one of my more painful lessons when I decided I was going to go right into entrepreneurship right out the gate, right out of college, like, you know, fresh, fresh, fresh out with debt, you know, not necessarily just a bunch of equity to roll on, you know, as a merchant, I think all of us can think of ourselves as merchants. I had to trade time in order to generate capital to then generate time to then generate capital and I have to go down that path for a lot of other people they start the opposite direction. They work a job first and they generate capital in order to generate time, in order to generate capital or to generate time. And so the, the equation starts on the other foot first. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, depending on what your situation is and what type of capital you have and what amount of capital do you have, both time and money and the, the resources and the thing that you're trying to figure out, you kind of have to figure out what you have more leverage over. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a sustainable, there's a considerable fixed cost, right. To living. Mm. And you have to keep that in mind, but from there, you have to figure out what is then your next sustainable fixed cost for your business to live for your, for your enterprise, for your ability to provide a service that mm. is yours and not somebody else's meaning you're not operating on someone else's, um, you know, merchant shop or merchant center. 
that's how we're going to look at, you know, being employed. So yeah, yeah. I think I diverted a little bit. It reminds me of, uh, I'm trying to find the movie. I can't remember the name. The movie with Justin Timberlake where- Oh yeah. The, the time, the time is like the, how you're like, if you have more time, you're like richer. And if you have less time, you're like poor. And like, what, what, I'm trying to find the name of the movie. I couldn't-, it's, I, couldn't I think it's it. actually called like In Time or something very on the nose like that. Yeah, well, I can't find it. But it's out there and it's basically like the little you got the little barcode on your your arm and you're like you're trading time for everything. And I feel like a lot of people like one of a lot of people's goals is like to buy a house because they're told like it's a great place to raise a family. It's a good long term investment. However, what people don't talk about is how much time are you going to spend fixing that house, mowing that lawn? And what is that taking away from? Yeah. I think you have to, for this, for the sake of real estate, we get into a lot of really, you know, it's a very fascinating conversation today because as I, as we can tell from this, just the inflationary reports, um, you know, making a hundred K a year is kind of the new middle class uh, for a lot of people. There is that they're, they're not there they're they're at the 40k range they're at the 50k range um if if, if that's if that works for them hopefully and, and, I, and I feel bad because that's really tough um you can't afford a house these days right just based on how real estate prices have increased um it's not even a question for a lot of people and i i do find that to be uh, a very a very challenging dilemma it, it kind of puts you in this position of saying like well what does it mean for me to rent for the rest of my life um, given real estate may not necessarily be something you can build equity in nowadays, but yeah, to that point, um, right now, uh, amidst my family, um, we have some properties that we manage and it's a job. It's, it's a relationship that we have to sustain. Um, but I'm not going to go into the, the same sense of arguments around that. Like, again, just due to the nature of how we've organized our time and our, avail our availabilities, like we've made it such that we don't have to trade in all of our time in order to upkeep the, the very things that are supposed to be assets to us. Otherwise, they're they're practically liabilities. Mm -hmm. So someone out there who is like working 12 hours a day, is like struggling, maybe they're starting to make some good money. What was, where's like the first place someone could start to start getting 15, 20, 30 minutes a day back? So it's a really interesting question. I mean, the first thing that I would probably try to do is say, you know, what is the current operation by which you live right now? Um, what is your, what is the outside of your day job would mean, which granted, let's say even within your day job, there may be things that you could delegate to other people. Um, obviously you'd have to figure out what's, what's viable and what's allowed in your workplace. Um, given the type of situation, we're in. I mean, if, you, if you're on your own business, then, you know, <laughs> I'm usually talking to you. Um, but I've always been just as curious to see how uh, employees of certain companies could outsource their own responsibilities, at least fractions of them, so that they could focus on the work that really makes them the most capital for their company, for their business, for themselves, ultimately. Like, everyone should be in the business for themselves, ultimately. But to answer your question, Josh, um, there are as much professional things that you could certainly outsource, depending on the nature of what your job is, depending on the nature of what are the tasks that are within your professional world and scape? Um, if you can find a task that costs $15 an hour at most for somebody else to do, and as a result, you're able to generate more time and energy towards $30 an hour tasks, $45 an hour tasks, whatever your salary is, you know, broken down into an hourly basis or as a business owner, whatever is your maximum value generating capabilities, usually business development, sales, you know, generating new business. Um, okay. That's your equation. That is your, you know, that is your system of logic that you're going to base around. Um, obviously you're, you're in a, in a way you're just basically, you're playing the opportunity cost game. Um, if I have a choice between cleaning my house for an hour every, every week versus having someone come in and clean for me. Okay. That hour that you get back, if that hour costs someone $25 to come in and clean your house, but you're able to generate $50 per that hour, cool. You've now, you've now made a net productivity of 25 bucks for that hour, assuming all makes sense in that regard. 
it's never always that easy. There is definitely broader equations to get into. Um, but generally, the lower you can find um, resources for cost, for time, the more you can focus more on value generating activities that are of the highest dollar capable to you. That's mm -hmm. That's the broad equation. The details from there, I mean, it all depends on what you really want to outsource. Like, what do you want to stop doing? Because it takes a lot of time and energy away from you. You hate doing it. You know, there are other opportunity costs to account for. It's not just time and money, but there's also energy to account for it too. And that's it's a very personal decision. Mm -hmm. What about not just time from a money perspective? Like, hey, I can make $50 and I could pay someone $25. So I'm getting uh, money arbitrage there, you know? I'm yeah, getting a free, I'm getting a free 25. What about what about like, hey, like instead of cleaning a house for an hour, I go for like a walk with my family for an hour. Like what what sort of things are you seeing with the people that you're working with from that sort of lens that because it's not all just dollars and cents. Um, sometimes you have to pay a little money to enjoy life a little bit. Right. So quality of life is huge. And I'm now sort of thinking back again, this is, always depends on your situation. Um, generationally speaking, it's very interesting to see how families have gone from saying, I need to work to survive to, I need to work to have a standard of living to, I need to work to have a quality of living. I think once you get to the quality of living situation, you are basically saying, as you kind of put it, Josh, like, Hey, um, I am willing to expense $25 an hour to this resource, to this human, to this person, or through this, to this, through this service, this offering, that's going to buy back an hour of my time. That's the time I want to go spend with my kids, right? That is disposable income that allows you to enjoy the things that really matter most in your life. I mean, it, it, Josh, I'm sure you know this best, right? From a um, from a money management standpoint, from a financial advice standpoint, you know, what are the things that you should be paying for? What are things that matter to you? What should be actually be in your budget? I think time with family is absolutely something worth budgeting for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, time, it's always ticking. And since being introduced to you, I started looking at things from a time perspective, not just money. It's like, hey, do I want to spend this $10 to get my groceries delivered? It's like, well, I don't have to drive there. I don't have to shop. I don't have to drive back. Even if it's like 20 or $25, it's like you start looking at it. It's like, you know, you can only do so much as a person. So those sort of things that we're starting to see. But some people are just like, why would I spend $20? Why would I spend $20, Conrad, to get my groceries delivered? That's stupid. Like, what would you say to that? My response would be, um, why would I spend two hours to get to go pick up my own groceries. That seems like a huge waste of my time. If you love doing grocery shopping, fantastic, go for it. If you love taking calls while you're in the car, if you're a very productive user, even if you just, if that's your you time, that rest time is just as productive for you. If that's what fulfills your operation of living and how you like to live, fantastic. For me, much like yourself, Josh, um, grocery shopping is a chore. I don't like doing it. Um, and when I can, I would, I would rather afford to have uh, a means by which I don't have to do it. I'd rather put that time elsewhere, whether it's to generate, because I know I can, to generate value that is of greater value. So to, to generate value that is of a greater amount than my, the, the, the cost that it would take to have someone do grocery shopping for me. Like I have to always play that, that budgeting game. Um, but again, if I'm already doing a really good job of that across the board with my time, then regardless of wanting to make the most of that opportunity cost and say, okay, by not having to spend $25, by, by spending $25 on groceries, I can now go focus on making $150 worth of capital in the next hour, right? Rather than having to be about that, I could just say, no, that's time I'm buying back for myself. That's the quality of life I want to purchase. And what, what do you feel like prevents people from taking like a small small leap of faith of getting their time packs, such as paying 10, 20. And if then you want to be generous on the tip, maybe tip someone five or 10 bucks to deliver groceries. What do you, what are you seeing? That's like mentally holding people back from that. I I'd say it's the familiarity of it. Um, 
to kind of to your point, Josh, earlier when you said like, why would I spend that type of money on on having someone do grocery shopping for me? Like, the, my first question would be like, have you ever done it before? Have you ever figured? Have you ever sensed that experience? Um, now, some people will say, oh my god, that, that's a trap. Once I get used to it, I'll never want to go back. And I'm like, look, sure, I get it. Conveniences are great, and as soon as they, as soon as you don't have them, now it becomes an inconvenience. But you know, I'm not asking you to completely change your entire lifestyle overnight. I'm asking you to get a sense of what it feels like to buy back time for when you need it. And so that way, when because there's because you have that ability now, you can use it. That becomes part of your lexicon of resources. Again, you're a merchant here. Oftentimes and all the time, we are always expending time no matter what. It's just a question of what we're expending it towards. But if you've never expended money for services or for things that are meant to help you, then what are you doing? Like, what are you what are you ultimately hoarding money for? Maybe I mean, for the most part, for those of us who really try to, you know, spend time, spend time, spend time, or invest it and nothing else, and and save every single dollar that we have, and put it in the stock market, or or save it all for retirement, all you're really doing is you're trying to leverage. You're trying to ultimately play this long term merchant game where you're going to trade all of that for some future far off when you're much older, right? And, and and I think we've been told quite clearly that that is not a reasonable thing for us to do. We're not trying to live now. We're not trying to work now for our for some future life. There has to be a balance. There has to be some kind of harmony between the two where we get to live a little bit now as much as we get to live, live a long time, you know, peacefully in the future. You have to account for that. Because mm -hmm. some people will be like, well, I don't have time. I need to go grocery shopping. I can't make it to the gym. It's like, well, if you spend twenty dollars, you could make it to the gym to invest in your well-being. I mean, how much, how much could that possibly cost you if you neglect your health for X amount of years? Have you ever thought about that sort of cost? Yeah. No, it, it it's an it. These are interesting decisions. Um, I would say. And I, I, my point here is, I don't want to come across as uh, neglectful of some of the more difficult circumstances in which these are not kind of the choices that people are being forced to make. There are some far more drastic time and money uh, decisions that people are trying to make today that are just, I think, unquestionably unsustainable. And, and there are bigger factors at play as to why that's the case. And I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry that as a society, we are here in that situation. For those of us who are more fortunate, um, you know, not to, not to sort of diminish the challenges and the, the sort of frustrations that you might be having mentally around trying to make these types of decisions. But this is what it takes to become rich personally, like as an individual to live your life and to take ownership and to have freedom. Um, you're, you, you've, you've, hopefully you've mastered the discipline of working, of, of putting in time to make money. Now you need to master the discipline of putting in money to make time mm -hmm. and to do this back and forth type of scale where you're constantly leveraging the one resource you have more of to generate value for the other and back and, and doing that over and over again and that's 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 the system i mean that's the system we're playing in take it or leave yeah, it yeah because i mean technically no one has to like retire from working like you could work for as long as you want but everyone's like well i only want to work till this amount then i just want to completely shut everything off. And that's why I'm sacrificing so much now so that I can live that life versus maybe taking the mentality of like, Hey, maybe if I get a little time back, I could stop and smell the roses now and remain healthy and not burn out. And I could spend my time doing the things that I love doing to support myself and whomever I want to spend time with. So Let's just say I'm someone who has a normal job, W-2 job, and I sit down with you, Conrad. What what would be like the first thing we look at together where you could start getting me back a little bit of time without, you know, spending thousands of dollars a month on that? Right. Yeah. Uh, let's definitely avoid putting in a, a ton of capital where we don't need to. So, um Josh, I'm going to use you as sort of an analogy here because, again, your day job is financial advice, and I think you do this from your world. You do this from this from from the financial books. 
I do this from the, um, from let's call it the temporal books. I do it from your calendar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an audit on your time, on your schedule. And this audit's going to comprise of two things. It's going to be very operational in nature. Like, what are you doing every day? What are your requirements? What are your commitments across each day? Personal, professional. And what's the sort of, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of financial understanding involved with that. Like, how like how are you going about generating value within your time for society at large such that you can then leverage that, that value and go, you know, save for retirement and, and live today? So we're going to do a little bit of that financial math. But we're going to look at the time math and we're going to look at how all this makes sense from a schedule standpoint. And we're going to ask kind of the more emotional side or the energetic side of what those of what that conversation brings is like, was, well, how does it all make you feel? Right. Like where how does the schedule work for you? How does it work against you? What are the things that you're doing in your life that whether personally, or professionally related, you know, what are the things that cost you a lot more than just basic time and money? Um I'm going to want to dive into and on one in one respect, I'm um, probably the professional side. I'm going to leverage the things that already generate value for you at a certain fixed cost, let's assume. Let's assume there's an hourly wage there or there's a salary. So I can I can do the math on that. You can do the math with me. And then we're going to say, okay, look, you generate $25, $30, $50 per hour doing this job. And parts of your job kind of involve these things that like take up a lot of your time. Um but these are $15 an hour tasks. Like I could find someone, we can go to the Philippines, you know, overseas together. If that's one option we want to take, we can find some very affordable uh, offshore virtual assistants. And with the right workflow, they can take on some of these jobs for you within your existing job that by proxy, you not having to do that, you now have that time back. And now you have a choice. Do you want to go spend that time on personal matters that are important for your health, your wellness, your ability to, you know, invest in other types of capital beyond just financial capital? Or because of this extra time, do you now have the means to increase the value in which you generate money in your business? Does that get you the promotion you're looking for? Okay, great. Uh, is that what you want? Is that what's, is that the next level we're looking for? Are we looking to just increase the total amount of capital that you're looking to generate? Fantastic. Then let's go ahead and do that. And that's the game I'm going to keep playing. Okay, next up. Now, now you're making a little bit more dollar per hour. Now you've increased your, your net worth here. What's the next order of tasks we can take off your plate? We're going to keep doing this. Again, you are a business. You, you are an operation. We're going to figure out what makes you more and more efficient towards the things that you maximally generate value for. And then, yeah, uh, personally speaking, the same could be said about grocery shopping, making sure you're going to the gym, making sure you're sleeping enough. Sleep has a huge impact on your ability to generate wealth because it just means you're help, happy and healthy and in a good mood. Nothing better to have uh, when you're trying to get work done uh, and trying to make, you know, trying to make a better quality of life for yourself. It's it's literally having a good quality of life generates a good quality of life. But yeah, and I totally agree. I feel like a lot of people just let time slip through their fingers, and then you could see this with people who have gone through life and they're like, man, it just went by so fast. Or I can't believe like, you know, now that I have a daughter, everyone's like, oh, it's, she's going to be in college before you know. And I'm just like, yo, I'm just trying to enjoy this time right now. I'm not thinking about 18 years in the future. Um, but people that have gone through that, they realize that how fast things can change. And if you don't spend the time to make sure you're maximizing your time, before you know it, you're graduating high school, then you're graduating college, then all of a sudden you're 30, 40, 50, and you're just look back and you're like, where did it all the time go? I will say that I and I can I can I can just from my experience of where I'm at with my age and right now, I can look back on when I was younger and realize, oh my God, I could I, that instance can feel like it was yesterday. Maybe because of the nature of my business, because I get so wrapped up around time and not just my own time, but other people's time. And because I used to be an engineer and so I used to really grind out hours, like problem solving, like it, it, there, there, there are clearly days for me that just right now with where I'm at with my business, I'm eager to put in a ton of hours. I, for, for the sake of my own sanity, um, I try not to unconsciously live that time. I really try my best to stay in the present of what's going on. And I don't try to hold on to anything. It's sort of a loose grip, if you will, a um, bit of Eastern philosophy around that. But 
if you were to tell me that a year ago uh, I used to be, you know, 27 and that here were the situations I was in, I actually have journal entries. I have records. I have introspection that I've done that reminds me about what was going on back then. Obviously, I look at it from a totally different lens today than I have a year ago or six months ago or three months ago. But I still have it. I have a different sense of that time. That time didn't fly by for me. I'm entering my own business, so so be it. There are other factors involved. For some people, life can be a little bit more stretched. There can be a lot more activity going on at the same time. When you have family, when you have kids, that whole concept of growing up, I'm sure that that turns into this experience. And I and I can tell you from having a dad who's 97 years old to date, um, his perspective and what he sort of shared with me about how he views time. It, for him, it is it's on a whole different scale, right? But at the end of the day, um, I hope that regardless of how old I get and how much time seems to stretch just because of how much has happened, um, I don't forget to take the sort of tempo of time um, in, in quote unquote real time, meaning the sort of the seconds that go by. I don't mind living each and every one of them. I shouldn't, regardless of how um, challenging or not certain moments of my time are. I just, to me, there's a, there's a justice involved with keeping up with the pace that is right now. Well, you're doing it all, Conrad. You're helping people. You've helped people like me. So if anyone out there needs to get their time back, find Conrad Ruiz at Well Aware, and he will be able to give you the audit that you're searching for to spend time on the things you want to spend time on. So thanks for coming on. It was fun. Thanks for sharing everything. And we'll see everyone next time. Bye, everyone.